As I stop in front of a village, a young man in his purple school uniform approaches me. His name is Adisu, and he wants me to follow him to his house. This is our home. We split the room in two. On this side, it's for us. And this is for the animals. This bench is for the parents, and the kids sit around the fire. The fire warms us because sometimes it's only five degrees. When we've eaten, we go to bed up there. And now, as you can see, we drink coffee. <laughs> I'm leaving Amharic country in direction of Aksum, cradle of an enigmatic kingdom. I'm entering the foothills of Tigray. It's October, so it's harvest time. This piece of land held back by dry stone walls is operated by small farmers who work with their families. Just like in France back in the day in the country, children give their parents a hand in the evenings after school or on Saturdays like today. Everything grows here. Teff, wheat, barley, peas, lentils, chickpeas, corn. The harvest is better here than elsewhere. Thank God it's not bad. The gesture of this old woman of Tigray enchants me. She throws handfuls of barley into the wind to separate the seed from the pulp. It's the winnowing, a practice from the ingenuity of the pioneers of agriculture. How many children do you have? I've got seven kids. Four of them have finished school, and three are here with us. With this, I make roasted barley for oatmeal. It's for my children. It'll give them strength. I give it to them. I give it to them. I give it to them. It's all erupting here, mountains like fingers pointing to the sky, like organs. And there, two huge rocks. It feels as if a giant has rolled them over. It's the great upheaval of the earth. I feel here an impression of grandiose, of course, but also of eternity, as if everything has always been this way. In this tangle of mountains, perched on a steep rock, are the monastery of Debra Damo. One particularity, it's inaccessible to the average person, not trained in rock climbing. At the bottom of the cliff, I meet an old monk. He's 75 years old. He comes back from the nearest town, which is about 15 kilometers away from here. I go up and down to do the shopping for the monks up there in the monastery where I live. Now I'm old, I need to be tied up to climb. Until recently, I was going up on my own, unattached. A saint from Syria was ordered by God to create a monastery isolated from the world. And according to the legend, it was a 15 meter long snake that first helped him get up to the rocky plateau. Faith nourishes the Ethiopian people's soul. To attempt separating anything between their beliefs, legends and stories, I want to go to Aksum, the mythical city in the north. For the believers, 
It's all about this chapel, surrounded by high gates. Behind the curtain at the entrance would be the famous Ark of the Covenant, which contains the tablets of the commandments given to Moses on Mount Sinai. No one can see it, but people come from all over the country to benefit from their supernatural powers. Aksum is also the mystery of its stones, some of which date back to a thousand years before Christ. I wonder how men could erect such blocks of stone, 10 floors high, weighing several thousand tons. The most far-fetched hypotheses have been put forward, among those the idea that elephants did this. But it is now fairly certain that the Aksumites, a seafaring people, erected the stones inch by inch with strings and hoists. As I walk through the site, I come across Alibram, an old scholar from the city. He's made up a story of his own, a clever mix of reality and fiction. Aksum is unique. It's one of the great wonders of the world. The small stelae were erected for the princes. The big ones were erected for the kings. But it must be said that not all kings have had one. It was a queen who got this one down. She wanted to destroy the religion of the serpent god and erase history. The fable is beautiful, but the reality is a little different. This column and a few others would have broken off during their erection or as a result of earthquakes. Fiction is more beautiful than reality. I prefer to believe Alibram. I have completed my expedition to the north. I continue my trip down to Gondar, the imperial city. I notice as I pass by curious clay cylinders hanging from the trees. I know that this region holds one of the eternal riches of Ethiopia, honey. Two beekeeping brothers are happy to show me their hives. For them, honey is a gift of nature, a symbol of sweetness and wisdom, as it is written in the Bible. They believe in all of its virtues. I love it. I love bees. Honey is a medicine. For example, if you have a stomach ache and you eat this honey, you'll be cured. We collect a lot here. You could get at least 10 kilos of honey from that tree. Bees are less aggressive at the end of the day. They are more so in the sunlight. You know, they're dangerous, even deadly. Sometimes they kill our animals. They can kill people too if you don't get out of there fast enough. So we have to be very careful. Be on your guard just in case. Mm. Be careful not to swallow a bee. It's a pure marvel. Oh. 